Hey, what's up humans? Today we're doing some soap. So this here is some Kraft and Pork Goat Milk Soap, and then I'm also throwing in some clear soap as well, because it's nice to have the mixture so that the pigments show up a little bit stronger. And so here I'm just taking a tube that I've cut off the end of, that I got some uh, sewing needles in on Amazon, I'm taping the end. And so then I'm taking some colorant here. This is just some powder colorant that I bought off Amazon mixed with uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And so I'm just putting a lot of the darker in one and a little bit in the other. And today we're going to be using Ocean Breeze by P&J Trading. And I'm going to put one drop in each. Here I have my some of my melt and pour melted and... As you can see, it's boiling. So the thing is, is you don't want your melt and pour to be too hot. So when it boils, that's actually, that's an issue. So I had to redo this part, but I still want to show you guys what I did. So I took my dark and my light melt and pour, and I poured them both on the tube at the same time while the tube was held up. Uh, and this will make a moon, but as you could see, since it was boiling, all the colors bled together, and I did have to redo that entirely. So, here I'm just getting some colors together for the sand at the end, and I'm gonna get together a bunch of other colors for my soap as well, off camera. But again, I'm just using some powder pigment mixed with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol, and then putting one drop of scent in each color. And so these are some of the colors that I created, and then with the sky, I'm actually going to continue to use this thicker plastic cup and uh, add color as I go and add scent as I go to get sort of like a pseudo gradient. So here, as you can see, it wasn't boiling, and what I poured in, I'm only pouring in about half of it, and then I'm spritzing it with isopropyl rubbing alcohol to... Uh, pop all the bubbles. Once it's set and solid, I'm gonna spritz it again. So you want to spritz it to pop the bubbles, but you also need to spritz it so that the layers of melt and pour stick together. And so here I added some red to that darker color, and then I'm spritzing it to get that glassy mirror-like finish. And so here I there was a couple of layers that my footage, I accidentally clicked record at the wrong time. So the previous layer on that was one of those. And then, yeah, so I'm just, I'm adding more red as I'm going. So it'll start out as like a dark blackish red and then go into kind of like an orangey color. And so I threw my moon in there and that was some of the footage that ended up being lost and you want to spritz your moon inlay with rubbing alcohol before you pop it in or it won't stick and so here I'm going in with my straight red and again as I'm working through these sky layers I'm putting in one drop of scent per layer so that it's all scented and so then here is my final layer of orange or actually I think I put on a layer of yellow afterwards didn't I Anyways, I'm trying to create that sky gradient of like a, a really red-orange sunset. So this is indeed the final layer of the melting pour. And as you can see around the mold, it gets a little bit messy. And I didn't say yet, I put these... I put my mold inside of another mold with some paper spacers to hold the sides together. I wanted to give it some support because this mold is pretty cheap and flimsy. Um, but it's my smallest, well, it's not my smallest, it's, it's my smaller bar mold so that I'm able to, like, experiment with designs, and this one is an experiment. Uh, so to create some mountains, once all the layers are really, like, nice and set, I'm using some tweezers here, or you could use another tool if that's what you got, and I'm scratching away some room for mountains so i'm going in with the point of it and then i'm kind of carving it at a tilt so that the mountains come to a point and then have a fatter 
bottom of it, if that makes any sense, because we're building this like upside down. So that's kind of how I create mountains in my melt and pour lately. I've tried a couple of other methods, but this one is the one that seems to be the most solid, surefire shot. Um, but you can, if you're building it the other direction, kind of put some plastic over it and um, shape it with your hands, but it doesn't look as good. And so here I'm just spritzing in my three greens uh, that I made for the mountains. And for every layer that I kind of am doing this uh, pour method, it looks best to have a dark, a medium, and a light. Sometimes it's nice to have an even lighter color or an even darker color to kind of mix things up. And then once that is totally set, we'll spritz it with alcohol again, and we will start with our ocean colors. And so I've got a dark blue. I'm using just the straight white that I put some scent in. I have a purplish blue, a teal blue that's really light, and then I have a uh, straight blue. And I'm just pouring these in one after each other, kind of spritzing it here and there. And again, one drop of scent in each of these. There's a specified amount of scent that you can put in melt and pour soap. And if you put too much in, it'll just leak out. So I find that I put in, yeah, about a drop per color works out pretty well. And using these cups works as long as you don't overheat your melt and pour. You can melt these cups if you heat your melt and pour up too much. And then these are my sand colors that I made earlier. And since I didn't have quite enough, I'm kind of like pushing it around to even it out and then giving it a spritz. Perhaps a little too late, but this is it about 12 hours later. It was definitely done before this point, but I like to wait for it to be really hard so that I'm able to cut it. Because if I don't wait long enough, I find I have more failure cuts. So we need to shave all around this to make it look nicer. So I'm using the shaver that is on my soap cutting thing and as you could see that one side had a little hole going through the moon but this side this side's pretty good and i shaved them both down to get the bubbles away and now it's time to get the sides and the bottom of it so you just want them to all be flat and not look all like weird and have streaks running down the sides from your uh little misfires where it's you know, it goes off the side, and then this is, here is about how much waste I had under my little soap shaver. So this one, not so much. I've definitely had worse, um, and the size of this mold definitely helps. And this is my soap cutter thing, and I'm using this knife that came with it. Now, if you're looking to get a soap cutting thingy like this, I, I would not suggest this one. Uh, the wooden ones, it's kind of hard to clean in between the ridges, and then I have a hard time getting the blade off to get it clean. I really suggest that you get more of a, a quality wire cutting kind of setup. Also, this little brick here that's supposed to hold it in place wiggles around all the time, and that's that sucks. You have to readjust it or else your bars get all wonky. And that's how I get really messed up misfire bars is by that thing moving and then it's super crooked. Like the first one was a little crooked, still doable, but the, yeah, sometimes they get really crooked and it's not, not ideal. But if you hold your hand steady and make sure you're following the line of the wood pressing up against it, they come out looking pretty good, and for this particular bar, I ended up having pretty good success. Not a whole lot of waste. There was one bar that ended up being a little bit wasted, but this pattern is awesome. The crashing waves worked out on the beach just like I wanted it to. It's got the mountains, and you know, that moon is not perfect, but I do really like it, and I think that this turned out really good. Uh, this is definitely my favorite bar right here. I mean, look at that. It really looks like waves. So, 
Now you guys know how I did this, and if you don't want to try to make your own soap, you can contact me on Instagram. The reason why I don't like share the price per bar is because I sell them by weight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And uh, this is the failure bar. Just uh, just didn't work out on that one. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Next, see you next time.